and healed, oh God. Father God, allow your power just to saturate this place, oh God. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will remove the spirit of distraction, oh God. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will open up the minds to be able to receive the word of God. Father God, allow your word to renew the mind, oh God, and penetrate the heart, oh God. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will just bring us on one accord, oh God. Father God, we just want to say how much we love you, O oh God. How much we adore you, O oh God. And it is in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. First, I want to give honor to God, to Jesus, who's my Lord and Savior. From my father and mother in the ministry, Pastor Nickerson and First Lady Nickerson. And from my husband and my family. And we're going to begin with Mark chapter 5. And we're going to begin with verse number 22 through 29. And when you have the word, say Amen. So then, in the, then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She has suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes because she thought, if I can just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. And so my title is, the distance between desperation to deliverance. Now, this woman was like many in the word of God that wasn't mentioned by name, but was mentioned by her issue or her condition. She had been tormented for 12 years. She wasn't born with the condition because the Bible would have said that she was born with this affliction. So she had experienced enormity before this condition came upon her. See, the Bible referenced sicknesses and disease as being a spirit of infirmity. So this spirit had attached itself during her young adult life. And therefore, the majority of her adult life, she suffered. See, under law, in Leviticus 15 and 19, in verses 25 through 27, this woman was considered unclean. Anything and anyone that she touched was also considered unclean. As a result, she could not mingle with people in public, lest she would defile them. She could not go to the woman's court in the temple because she was rendered unclean. She could not be married because it would defile her husband. If she was married, never mentioned if she had a family, but if she was, her husband would have been forced to divorce her. She could not work around others because of the danger. This reduced her life to begging from a distance for just food and being able to live. This condition left her so isolated that she was alone in a home. She was suffering. She was weak. She was frail. The life that she knew was just draining out of her. 
she was headed to death. All her money was gone. She had nothing left. She was just trying to maintain with the little existence that she did have. And many a times when we read about the woman with the issue of blood, we say we can't even fathom having to go through something for 12 years. But we all have an issue that's been tormenting us for days and months and nights and years. Now, it may not be the same issue of blood, but I need you to tell somebody that I have an issue because sometimes when we begin to come to church or we, we get saved and we learn a few Bible verses, we think that we, haven't, we don't need to be delivered or we don't need to be set free. So I need you to turn to your neighbor and tell them that I have an issue. Now, make sure they say it back because sometimes we get beside ourselves when we only know one verse. Deliverance is for the believer and the unbelievers. You can be saved and yet still be in bondage. We all are not without issues, but what happens when the very life you have is draining out of you? Now, it could be that the more you work, the more bills you have to pay. For some, in 10 days, the rent is due. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. It could be that some of us, parents abandoned us, and we were left to be raised by someone else. So now you feel hurt, unwanted, unloved. And at that moment, the accuser of our soul sent the spirit of rejection. Now you fight every relationship in your life. Now you can't stop gossiping, and you're killing people with your words. We don't know why we don't like people. We just know we just don't. Some of us has been on the other side of being gossiped about. So now we feel that we're unsafe, we're cast aside, we're threatened. And at that, mo at that moment, the spirit of insecurity begins to attach itself. Now, every time you walk around, you're in competition with everybody. We're buying brand names, but we only have Walmart budget. <laughs> Because we're competing with everybody around us because we have this spirit of insecurity that we got to measure up to everybody that's around us. It could be that you've been touched or molested by a family member, a family friend, and at that moment, the spirit of retaliation attached itself. So now you're filled with hatred and you have made a vengeance that says that no one is going to ever hurt me like that again. And so now you're an adult, and now you have this thing towards men or this thing towards women. It could even be that you was cheated on and betrayed and belittled. You felt like you'll never measure up. And at that moment, unforgiveness attached itself. Now, you thought that you can handle all these internal issues but what happens when everything you have bottled in has started to leak out? When the life is pouring out of you and you can't seem to find no joy. You know it's not normal to always see the glass empty. You know it's not normal to see dark as never light. And so you decide, well, let me go to the doctor. Maybe they can help, like the lady with the issue of blood. And they begin to prescribe you all these antidepressant pills. And then all of a sudden, they give you an, another pill for the symptom from that pill. And day by day, it gets worse and worse because everything is just seeping out. And then it begins to affect everyone around you. You can't even walk in a room because the atmosphere began to change. You see negativity in everything, church, home, and work. But what do you do when you know that you have this issue and you're in this place of desperation and you know that you need to be delivered? How do you get from 
desperation to deliverance. Even if you could tell someone that you was dealing with somebody, something or an issue or condition, they will act like you was one of those outbreak monkeys. You know, they'll be, oh, you contagious. We don't want to get next to you. Even in your mind, you have said, I'm not going to make it to 2015. You said it this morning. I'm not going to live past this year. Because you have tried it all. So what gets you to a place where you can get deliverance? So the scripture said that she had heard about Jesus. So I picture this lady in her home alone, and as she looking out her window, and there is a crowd of people going to where Jesus is, and she's saying, hey, what's all the commotion? They say, you know, we told you about this Jesus. He's here, he's here. And as she began to wrap herself up in her frail body, she said, I just got to go to where he's at. See, I'm trying to paint the picture because sometimes we can't see it unless we're in the same situation. So I'm going to need three volunteers, three men. I need one more. Okay, I got three now. Okay, y'all stand shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. And then you stand in front of them. Okay. Okay, hold on. Shoulder to shoulder, turn this way. Okay. In front of them. Okay, so the, here is a lady that has suffered for 12 years. She's weak. No fight left. And when she gets to the location, the location didn't heal her. She still was in a stage of desperation. So I began to think when we got here today, our desperation didn't change, just our physical location. So at a distance, she can see Jesus. And the distance between where she's at and where he is seems so far away. Yeah. Yeah. How can I get to thee? How can I be made whole again? You came here today and you're trying to figure out, I know I have no other options. I know I'm at the location, but how can I get to where he's at when there's a crowd? Yeah. And so the scripture says that she thought to herself, if I can just touch his clothes. So the first thing I want to ask you, what are you thinking? Are you thinking that when I get to the house of God, if I can find two or three that gather in his name, that I will be made whole again. Are you thinking that if I go at the altar and I let it all out, that I'll be made whole again? But are you taking a back seat to your deliverance? And you're saying that it's too many people at the altar. I'll wait till next Sunday. Are you saying that maybe next Sunday... I'll come if somebody come get me. If she would have been thinking that, here's Jesus. Jesus, it's me over here. Come to my pew. I'm over here. Come to where I'm at. If she would have been thinking that, maybe if I, maybe if he make a U-turn and come to me. But Jesus was on his way to Jerry's daughter. Sometimes you can reason in your mind and you can delay your deliverance. See, because when you're in, Romans 8 and 6 says this, a mind that is set in the flesh is of death. But the mind that is set on the spirit is of life and peace. So I'm asking
of you, what are you thinking in your mind? Are you thinking that when I pray, he's going to answer all my prayers? Whatever I submit unto you, God, is, is before me. What are you thinking? It says that she thought to herself, if I can just touch him. Her thoughts put her faith in action. So she began to walk. And Jesus was walking. So it took a lot of strength and it took a lot of, it took a lot of just bringing herself together. Now, the men was up front. Because, you know, the, men, the women couldn't go and interrupt the men. So they was walking behind Jesus. And she, as close as she got, he got farther. It never said he stopped. So my next question is, how bad do you want it? How bad are you able to gird yourself up and begin to go to where Jesus is? It says that she began to press her way through. And there was some resistance. And she began to say, if I can just touch him, if I can just get to him, the distance between me and thee seems so far, but if I can think that I can do it, I can press my way to get to where he's at. So I'm asking you, how bad do you want your deliverance? How bad do you want to be set free? Are you going to allow people to distract you? Are you going to allow the men to distract you? Are you going to believe, are you going to believe that even though he's in movement and all I got to do is just touch the hem of his garment? The word says that she pressed through. And the problem is, is that we press, but we give up. She made her way through. How bad do you want your deliverance? How bad do you want to be set free? When you come into the house of God, it's like going to the emergency room. When you go to the emergency room, you sign your name, and the first thing they ask you was, what's your condition? Then a nurse comes out and calls you by name. How dare you sit there and your name is being called? <laughs> Maybe next Sunday I'll come. You're dying. Do you understand you're on your way to your grave? And you're sitting there, and he's calling you out. And you're saying, not this time. How dare you come into the house of God and you say, it's not for me. When you get this tug in your spirit that says you better run down to that altar. So she begins to press her way. And as she pressed her way, she took hold of what she had. And so I'm asking you today just two questions. What are you thinking? And how bad do you want it? We're all in a need. We're all in a condition of desperation. And we're all in need of being delivered. So why would you allow the hindrance of people? Because if you knew what I was dealing with on my people, if you know my mindset, if you know I wanted to die last night, if you knew that the enemy came on my way to church and said to drive off the cliff, if, if you knew what I was dealing with in the inside, you will make your way to this altar. And you will say, Lord, I believe and I have faith in everything that you said. It shall be done. Everything that you have spoken in my life, it shall be done. So what are you thinking? How do you renew your mind? How do you renew it? She heard about Jesus. But how do you get to a place of renewal? How do you bridge the gap? You can be in church Sunday after Sunday 
and not be able to get what you need. And then you begin to blame everybody else. Pastor didn't preach the right word. If he would have said this one thing, I would have came down to the altar. If someone would have came and grabbed my hand, when God is saying, you better catch up to what I'm giving you. Be persistent. Think about what you're thinking about. Don't think about defeat. She didn't think about, no doubt, enter her mind. She said, if I can just touch him. And her touching, she began to walk. We're dead men walking. We're on our way to our grave, and I understand that we're going to get everything in the by and by. But I don't want the next 12 years of my life to be suffer, heartache, and pain. You can have your victory on this side. If you would just press your way and say, I just want to touch my victory. I want to get to my healing. I want my life to be changed. I want to have my generations change. Do you understand that your kids is under an attack? It's going to take you to come down to the altar to set your household in order. When you come to church, it's not a game. This ain't sightseeing. It's not for entertainment. But I can see y'all outside of church. When you come here, it's about what do I need for my soul? How can I be set free? Change your thinking so you will be able to be set free. Don't go another day, another month, another year being in bondage when you can be set free. It's free. You don't have to pay for nothing. You don't have to pay for anything. It's yours for the asking. So I came to challenge you. This is my challenge to you. I want you to be able to tap into what you have heard about him. What have you heard about him? See, reason is that when you reason about logic, it gives room for doubt. But when you're walking in the spirit, like she was walking in the spirit, your mind is set on the miraculous. See, logic said that Jesus was the son of God, that he shouldn't be born of Mary. That he wouldn't come through a generation of David who was the adulterer and Rahab was the prostitute. See, that's reason. But the miraculous said that I can step in any generation I want to step through to get my people set free. See, the reasoning said that it wasn't going to take just one man to free human, the human race. But the miraculous said it just took one. So what you have to do is you, faith is believing in the impossible. That's how you tap into who you are and the faith that you have because you have to think and the miraculous quit reasoning for your deliverance. It is not going to make sense. It's not going to make sense to you. So I ask you today is to renew your mind into the spirit. What you don't see, that's what faith is, what you don't see. Do you see yourself being made whole again? And once you see it, you press your way to get to where he's at. You don't allow it to be distraction. When you come here, you just lay it all out. Just lay it all out the altar. And I guarantee you, he never, he, he's never let us down. He never let us down. He said, I will deliver you 
for everything that you asked me to deliver you. It's nothing that you have done or you're dealing with that I won't set you free from. So I just ask you today is to, the space in between you and God is just a thought and it's just a press away. It's just a thought and a press away. So with that information, what steps are you going to take to be set free? We're all suffering. It can be a day. It can be a month. It can be years. How long do you want to suffer in your condition and not be set free and not have a, a change of heart and to grab on to who Jesus really is? So I just ask you today is to allow your thinking to press forward to your deliverance. Amen. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. Amen. Now is the time over the invitation is being extended. You know, when I started to think about uh, pressing my way to Jesus, I had to give up something. Somebody here is decision making time. We've been struggling all week long. We had this going on. We had that going on. But if I can just make my way to the house of faith, I believe that that's a breakthrough. You know, when we learn how to surrender and submit to the will of God, we will find our burdens being light. And when we look at this passage of Scripture with the woman with the issue of blood, she took a chance. She, she heard about a man named Jesus. We've been hearing about a man named Jesus for a long time. Would you trust him? Whatever we may be going through, he's the God that anything is possible with God. Maybe you've been having this disobedient child, things been going crazy on the job. You just need to press your way to the altar. How many of us realize that he's able? If, he, if you believe that God is able, you need to make your way to the altar. Whatever your trials may be, whatever, whatever you are going through, if you just learn how to trust and believe that he's an almighty and powerful God, and just give it to him. I want you to know today that he's able. Whatever that you need in need of right now, this is the time that you need to press your way to the altar. The Bible declared that a man needs to always pray and not cease. I'm praying not to believe that prayer changes things. As a matter of fact, if you can see me right now, there's a good chance that you've seen a proud change in a man. How many of us realize that he's an able God? How many of us need God to come here and just step with him? The Bible says that he's standing at the door knocking. If you just let him in and he'll come and dine with you, just open your heart to the Lord right now. Don't worry about what's going on around you. Just give it to him. Somebody might need a covering of their life right now. We extend this privilege. We are looking for new members. Will you come? Will you come? This is the time where we need to give our burdens to the Lord. If you get sick and tired of bumping in the same thing over and over and over and over again and looking for the, uh, the different result, that's a sad. But how many of you realize that God is able to do it seemingly abundant? All that you can ever imagine and think, according to the power that's working in you. Will you come? Will you come? We got time. We got time. Will you come? Struggle can be over. All you have to do is take your struggle to Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
I'm just that kind of God that I do all the cleansing on the inside. Because when I start cleansing on the inside, it manifests on the outside. Somebody ought to try me. Somebody ought to try me. Yes, Lord. We still got time. When you think about the goodness of God, it ought to make you want to shout. Here I am, Lord. How many of us realize you can't be God's gift? God is so good to us. Even when we ain't no good to ourselves, he still loves us. Somebody need to make their way up to the altar and begin to surrender. All you got to do is say, here I am, Lord. Take me, take me, take me, take me, Lord. And trust God. 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 Somebody else ought to trust God. We've been waiting on this to come. We've been waiting on this to happen. You need to come and give it to the Lord. Amen. Right now is your time and your season. Walk into your new death. Put your new destiny in the land way. Walk in. Change the Hallelujah. Change the God. Hallelujah. I gotta do Change the God. I gotta do so. Change the God. I gotta do so. Change the God. Change the God. Come on, we got time. I gotta do so. It's the sin to make a time. another. Somebody been struggling all week long. But we worried about people got to say what they got to say about me. But how many of you realize that God's opinion is the only one you should be worried about? So if you're going through a struggle right now, this is the right appointed time for you to bring it to the Lord. Right now. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I'm bringing all of my burdens. I've been burning down. I've been bumping into this. I've been bumping into that. But now it's time for you to bump right into the Lord. Get in his presence. No shackles on my feet. He's a, he's a mind regulator. If you just learn how to lean and depend on a man named Jesus. Have you tried him for yourself? Grandma told me about it. My mama told me about him, but when I tried him for myself, my yes, I'm Lord. Finally free, finally. Yes, Lord. Just, just, the prayers have been extended. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Father, we come to you, Father God, as humble as we know how, Father. Lord, we ask that you replenish your prayer warriors, Father God. Continue to take them to the highest heights in you, Father God. Heavenly Father, for the one that had a desire to get up that didn't, didn't get up, Father God. We just ask that you, you continue to put your spiritual halo over their head, Father God, and let them know that you are God, and there should be no other God besides you, Father. Lord, we pray many more sermons for the woman of God that stand and right divide the world of truth on today, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to continue to cover the shepherd and our first lady of this house, Father God, as you continue to take him high and heights in you, Father. We pray many blessings over their lives, Father. In your dawn and son, Christ Jesus' name, we declare a decree. Write this over everybody who assembled here on today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the woman of God some love in this house. If you didn't move from desperation to deliverance, it's nobody's fault. 
but your own. Amen. Mighty word, a healing word. Somebody been healed in the house on today. We thank God for all that he's doing. Amen. And we thank God for each one of you. And I want to thank God for both. Let me just start with last Sunday. I want to thank uh, the ministers that ministered on last week. Uh, thank them for bringing the word. And then I thank the ladies for bringing the word on today. You can probably hear that I'm short on wind. But I know my God to be a healer. And I'm one that don't never give up. But I'm moving from desperation to deliverance. And more than anything, I just need you praying for me. Amen. Because it's going to be all right. Amen. It's, it's going to be all right. It's just something that I deal with from time to time. The old members know the story. The new members don't. I've been on life support. And so now I know how to act. It's hard, it's hard sitting there and not being myself. But I realize the more I move, the more I talk, the weaker I get. Amen? So just pray for me. Keep pastor in prayer. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. And I, again, I, I, I just want to say that was a, a dynamic movement of God. God has a way of moving in the right time. And you know, my spirit tells me somebody still didn't let go. After a message like that, after seeing folk run to the altar for deliverance, how can you leave here broken? You can't leave broken. You ought to want to be made whole. You ought to want to be set free. And you have to learn how to surrender. Surrendering means I'm giving it up to you, God. I'm believing through faith that you're going to make a way out of no way. And with you, I know that nothing is impossible. I may be talked about. I may be lied on. But as long as I clean up my walk with you, and I began to walk the way that you want me to walk, then I began to love the way that you put in your book for me to love. And I understand that if I just started loving on folk, that everything else will work its right place in my life. And the more that I began to love on folk, the more that the old man will begin to come out of me. And when the old man began to move out of me, then I can do the things in Christ Amen. that he has called me to do. Amen. Amen. Give her a mic. Good afternoon, G Stop. Here we grow again. First, we have Valerie Payne, who's coming by Christian Experience. If you can please stand. Then we have Davis Batch Jr., who's coming by Christian Experience. If you can please stand. And then we have Crystal McKinney, who's coming under Watch Care. If you can please stand. And also under Watch Care is Yolanda Trigg. If you can please stand. Amen. Welcome to G Stop. Come on, give them a big, big G Stop welcome. Amen. Let's just give God a hand praise. Amen. 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 And I just ask that you all will stand with me and stand with, with, with the pastor and the first lady. Let's just pray for our pastor. Amen. Amen. We know that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. Amen. So let's just stand, dear Heavenly Father, knowing that, that God is going to heal our man of God. Matter of fact, we already speak healing in his life. Amen. Amen. This is nothing more than a situation. It's just an issue. But he said he already pressed his way to his deliverance. So let's just stand this week. And at 12 o'clock every day this week, let's just pray for our man of God. Amen. And we're going to believe that on next Sunday he will stand. He's going to stand in this pulpit, and he's going to preach an uncompromised word. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I'm up for the offering. If you haven't had an opportunity to give anything, 
now you can. Amen? Amen. I just, before we do the offering, all of those members that united with the g Star family in the month of May and June, we ask that you would join the pastor and the first lady in the next level building immediately following the benediction. Amen? Amen. Is there anyone who is in need of an envelope? If you would raise your hand.